Dear 2020. Wait a second. That's an odd way of addressing a year. So the Webster Dictionary defines a letter as a direct or a personal written message to one other person. And one could argue that you're not a person, you're just a year. For a person or a friend is someone with whom you share experiences, go through various emotions, have some fights but a better proportion of fun as well. In light of that connection, I find it difficult to not see you as a person. So I guess, dear 2020, will do for now. Let's recant how we met, for it allows us an opportunity to look at the contrast that it has been. The very first day we met, you seemed like any other. Well, maybe just a little more promise, a little more hope. But as history bears witness, the very nuisances that seemed like minor inconvenience at first turned out to be your defining mark. In hindsight, they were but the subtle nuances. These very nuances remind me of certain words by Albert Camus. It is probably true that a man remains forever unknown to us and that there is in him something irreducible that escapes us. But practically I know men and recognize them by their behavior, by the totality of their deeds, by the consequences caused in life by their presence. It's usually in the final analysis that a thing could be said about our words and our actions. So this letter is just that, a retrospective. And given the result of that, I beckon that a gratitude might be in order. So, basic stuff first. I'd like to thank you for demonstrating that the fastest way to my goals and my ideals is by slowing down. That was awesome. I'd like to thank you for showing me that whether I like it or not, the process of decluttering will be messy. And might I add, ridiculously so. I'd like to thank you for illustrating how sometimes the best way to pause in a conversation is not by just shutting up, but by taking a deep breath. Nature's version of a full stop. For helping me understand that there would be consequences, terribly and otherwise, whether I spoke my truth or not. Although, in the former case, the least I could cherish was the ability to call those consequences my own. For reminding me that before I help others, I better help myself. For whispering to me that in the process of trying to find my voice, I'll end up losing it a couple several times. For showing me that rules are meant to be broken, even those, well, especially those that I made for myself. And lastly, I'll be forever grateful to you for helping me see that it takes more than just one individual year to make a lifetime. Thank you 2020 and to the years that make a lifetime. Yours sincerely, me.